Okay, I've been making some crazy, crazy claims, but I don't think they're crazy. That's an iron asteroid, and that right there is a vein, and that is an artery. And the reason I know that is because that one is very dark and black and has already lost all of its oxygen, and that is still oxygenated blood. I'm going to go through, you know, this is what it is, and now, I mean, it sounds insane, but everything in the world and everything uh, in space was alive at one time, and I believe asteroids, comets, and all that business, meteors, they were, were creatures of, somehow, I don't know how that happened, but now they're in body parts as, as they circle the sun and get torn to shreds, I, I believe. And then they enter our atmosphere. And then they actually, this would be, a, I, I believe, something extremely dense in, in blood because blood is literally iron. And iron w coming through the atmosphere would boil off all the organics and end up with the smelt, which is this. And the crystalline shapes are because of all the other different metallic uh, components that have different types of crystal structure and then when they etch it with acid, and I'm sure that was etched with acid, they, they show up their own little crystal pattern. Alright, this is all about blood and it's, it's just ex totally easy to understand and very very simple for anybody to find fossils in their backyard and I'm going to show you how to do it right now and the way you're going to tell is because of the blood. You're going to always have a vein and an artery to supply blood. Every single creature that we know of that consumes oxygen runs on this principle. And the blood is in your body. It goes in red and it comes back very dark. And they, they claim, it's, it's fully understood, it's, the blood is always red actually, veins look blue. Now. It says the hearts pump blood to your lungs and pick up oxygen. The oxygen rich blood is then pumped out to your body through the arteries. The arteries have no clamps, totally open tubes, swish, the blood goes through and it, it goes in and then it passes through these little blood vessels and it sucks off all the oxygen It comes up the other side back through the veins. It's black, well it's a real dark. Now, uh, so now it talks about this and it says meanwhile, Meanwhile, here's what happens to the blood in your body. The heart pumps blood to your lungs, picks up the oxygen, and the oxygen-rich blood is then pumped out to your body through your artery. It is bright red at this point. Remember this. This is the key. It's so simple. It is bright red. Now, what happens after that? From your arteries, the blood flows through tiny little blood vessels. And I'm going to show you this. Let me show you this exact process. Flows through tiny little blood vessels called capillaries. If people heard all this stuff, they don't probably understand it, but this is simple. And that's where it sucks off the oxygen. So where it gives up the oxygen to the body's tissues. Yes, your lips have a lot of these capillaries and that's why they're red. Now, listen to this. Your blood, now exhausted of its oxygen, is dark red. It's really, literally almost black and it is black. And I'll show you why it's black. Because it, once it turns into, once it hits the oxygen, it goes black because it's what's called FeO2 at that point, two oxygens. FeO3 is three oxygens, that's oxygen in your blood. Totally understand, totally simple to see. Now, and then it returns to your heart to get red again. It's case closed. You see that? That's a, that is a fossil, and that is the, the uh, artery side, and that's the vein side coming back. That was a foot, look at that, that's gold in there. These things, you know, it depends on how they die, how the blood leaches out, where it collects. I got tons of these things. Now, look at this one. This is this is what we're talking about, how the blood gets actually used. I'm going to show you the usage of blood in a body. This is a bone. Now, everybody look at that and say, oh, that's not a bone. Well, it is a bone. It's absolutely a bone. Now, you can see the fascia on it and all that stuff, that like white fiber stuff. Now. Here is where the blood is being used. This is like, I don't know if you can see this, it's going to be very difficult. That's a reddish color. Then it starts to go into a little rust here. Then it turns into that brown looking color. And then by the time you get to the other side where the vein is, it's totally depleted of its oxygen. It's black. Now, that is called FeO3, which is three oxygens. And as it starts to, the guy running around and he's using up oxygen, by the time it hits this side and starts to head back to the vein, uh, through the veins, it's 
used up it's, that extra oxygen. Now it's FeO2. Now that's red and black. Red is FeO3, black is FeO2. In between is the vessels, and I just I, I have a little section about that. And that's what happens. And now veins have clamps in them so the blood cannot go backwards. When you die, your veins clamp off. The arteries do not, and usually the arteries are where they blow out. So that's that's all I have to tell you about veins and arteries and blood. And it's extremely simple, and if you go in your backyard, you'll find these rocks everywhere. Every single rock in your backyard has veins and arteries. Uh, you know, if you cut them open, this is what you're going to find. These little veins and arteries in them. That's, it didn't grow there by accident. Here's one here. Let me show, show you this. This is what you're going to find in, in, vein, in, in rocks. Veins, black, arteries, red or, or rust-colored or empty because they, they blow out. And then plagio places, you see that? That's tendon emplacements. These things were alive and they just have to look at them. All right, I'm going to show you this. I'm not showing off. I'm just trying to get some credibility. This was my life, really. I mean, I, I've done this all my life. As you can see, this paper doesn't get this way overnight. Now, and I, I, I've done all of this stuff. It's not, it's not something I'm unfamiliar with. I fully understand this stuff. Bonding and all of the quantum and all this. This was years and years and years ago. You don't forget this stuff overnight. I've been doing this my whole life. I never walked away from it. And I find everything interesting. I mean, I've done... I got all the lab analysis of everything. And, and so I'm not just uh, somebody, you know, out in the woods found a rock and, and think I found, I found something special. No, I found something special. Now, I also do other things. I'm not just, just this is not just my life as the rocks. You see this right here? I'm working with a guy in Australia on, um, on physics stuff. And this is, uh, this is literally we think we've exceeded the speed of light using Venturi effects in, uh, in the slit experiments, and these are the particles of light. And, and nobody will look at this either. You know, I'm outside the realm of the club, so it's sort of, you, you, they, they don't take you serious. But this is pretty serious stuff. All right, I've been laughed at for talking about the things that I've been talking about. They're kind of spectacular, and I really am not accepted and I just want you to see that I do have some this is my shop and all, everything here is dedicated to doing this work and uh, I've been doing it for many 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 years and I have a lot of ev evidence and well everything I have is, is completely proven I have CAT scans, 7 CAT scans, 3 DNA tests, is, everything here is just totally proven now I'm going to show you a, a different area where I do uh, some other stuff all right, this is where I do um, some chemical tests, and I, I literally make fossils. And the, the process is electrification. It's, it's, a, it's, it's electrolysis. It's just not understood. Anyway, uh, and they're natural, natural in, in, the, in the ground. I go through all this stuff later. But the, I go through, see, this is actually blood, uh, and, and that's what, uh, what opals are made in. I'm going to start making some opals. I, I made some feldspar and things like that. It's, it's a natural process, and, uh, and it's just never been really looked at. Now, if that interests you, what you just saw, I have over 150 videos and almost as many hits. <laughs> now, very few people are, are looking at this stuff, but it's, it's pretty interesting to me. Now, if you go on mudfossils.com, I have a website and I have a, a YouTube channel, and this is, tells everything, shows everything, and I have a lot more than just... Uh, than just um, rocks and things. I have um, physics and all that stuff on there. And actually, see this? Stonehenge is a giant. Anyway, go on there and look, and um, if it interests you, God bless you.